some friends of mine who are Lavon people who are certified movement analysts, they always joke, they say, for all your movement invention, the thing that you're, it's, it's wonderful, but the thing that you're really trying to play with is relational games. How people relate to each other, how bodies moving, what is the cause and effect of it. And if you notice, like for instance, with the partnering, they're always threading through each other. It's a Celtic knot. It's a, it's, um, it's a game of cat's cradle with people. Um, so we started just playing relational games and doing, uh, having Mark do clown workshops with us and exploring the uh, tropes of everything from new vaudeville uh, to moments from certain cinematic moments from, from movies. I remember thinking to myself how much kindred souls that I always thought that Cunningham and Keaton would have been. Uh, there's just something about the way Keaton structures his jokes. You see it in cartoons all the time. It's the uh, it's like the threes of comedy. But it's playing with those tropes. It's playing with joke structures. That a joke is a structure. Um, it offers an expectation. Like it's one of the ones. Like here's a word joke. If pro is the opposite of con, what is the opposite of progress? Congress. There are moments in here, and they're not literal, they're just like pastiches and collages of things. Uh, and they all seem to be based around these ideas of these kind of French or French-ish films, like The Red Balloon, The Umbrellas of Schoenberg. Yeah, you're still doing this. Okay. I was looking also at uh, the films of Jacques Tati. If you've ever seen Playtime, it's a kind of Merce Cunningham film. There's an, it's an, it's an event that just watches. Yeah. I always imagine that someone like David Gordon or Yvonne Rayner yeah. would be fans. Be, Kenneth King, too, would be big fans of Jacques Tati. He was kind of uh, finding the absurdness of the mundane. There's a. Um, Film by French New Wave director Agnes Varda called The Gleaners and I, in which you just keep layering and picking and putting things together. Uh, I mean, the work is almost a stone yes. soup, if you will. The summer point. When you haven't been to an affair like this before, you feel pretty strange. You might even feel uncomfortable. It's Mark Chagall painting the Ernie Kovac show, or, uh, or Gertrude Stein writing a Bruce Lee Kung Fu film. These little episodic things that gather, that accumulate into uh, odd little relational gameplay. Uh, I like your best Shirley McLean moment. Hey. I, I see little things here that kind of remind me of things like um, like Cornell boxes, the, the little dioramas that Joseph Cornell made. These little, there's odd little moments of whimsy in them. Um, oh! Yes? That's fine. Like when you make food together with friends, mm -hmm. when you make a meal together, uh, I, I like to trust that the intelligence of the room is always gonna be greater than my own. Mm -hmm. Part of my job is to Maybe notice when something you know really compelling is happening, or someone else brings it to my attention. Watch that corner of the room again. I know you're focused on this duet, but watch. I, I'm I'm still not sure what it is yet. It just keeps gathering and layering. So it's almost like Spalding Gray's monster in a box. A friend was a friend and I were talking about concept. It, it's similar. I get this as someone like from house dancing and b boy. You want just enough form, just enough form to barely contain the force of what you're doing. There's a little cat in the hat to it. Too much form, you neuter the force. Too little form, and all that energy just kind of dissipates. A point in every direction is the same as no point at all. We're barely finding the structures for it, and 
every now and then part of part of the things in jokes is to transgress the structure that you've set up. But what we would in dance call like human variation. Even the way I speak, bouncing from idea to idea is is what the choreography is like just but it's a collective game playing and improvisation of, of the group. I'm fortunate enough to have a bunch of rocket scientists in the room with, uh, with rockets in their asses who, who want to play. The idea of something being, having a musical or rhythmic integrity, but also things like comic rhythms. Wait the beat, I know you're off the music, take the, don't fulfill the expectation and take it in another direction, like playing those games. And almost the same way when you absentmindedly doodle or something. I was originally a visual arts student, design student, with a minor in philosophy. Uh, when I was b-boy, I used to do a lot of graffiti. And if you think about the typography and graffiti, the, that kind of wild style lettering, these kind of organized chaoses. Um, I find myself interested in them. think about old Shakespearean troops or some of the stuff that Peter Brook, you know, mm -hmm. talks about in theater that, like in certain cultures, there's not a separate, there's not a separate idea of mover and actor. You know, it, you see a lot in Asian theater, in Asian, uh, it's, it's the reason you see, uh, like in the early Kung Fu films, those gestural languages, it's from Beijing opera. It's the same thing when we went through our sound and film phase, they're all coming from music hall. Uh, you know, in vaudeville, and they're performing on these stages for large numbers of people, so the language has that... Thank you, you're looking tribute to Alexander Platt. It has that archness, it has that kind of overly done. I'm, I'm kind of watching the group play with their own wit, you know, repartee. But I see a lot of things. I don't know if they're conscious. I don't know if we put them in there consciously. But it's like some of the steps. You can definitely relate to stuff like watching Gwen Verdon and, and, and Fosse routines. Uh, and look what happened. Um, and again, there are also people who have, they stay really open out there and have a really nice sense of comic timing. They, they, they perform well as an ensemble together. They're willing to like, in the words of Beckett, fail and fail better. Which I think is what's needed for the piece. Peace wouldn't be what it currently is with without that. We would like to gratefully, gratefully thank Joyce for having us over to their house to figure all this out. To actually t to turn to turn a to turn a pile of tiny, small ideas and phrases actually into a into a work. Yeah, sorry, I need a shot. It's allowed us to also also bring everyone in in the same space and find some kind of cohesion and keep, you know, it's okay to, it's, I'm okay with not knowing what this thing is yet. I, I could say that about most of my work. I'm, I know myself as hearsay. Um, you know, uh, sometimes when I read reviews, oh, that's what it's about. I didn't know that. Thank you.